I ask you questions? Can I ask Michelle questions? Yeah, okay, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> you're allowed to. Um, is it weird when people come up to you and tell you that they raise you raise them? Hello everyone, I'm Michelle Fon. Aloha everyone, I'm Bremen Rock and she raised me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so curious to know when, how old were you when you first saw my video? When my mom won that iPad in her Christmas party, <laughs> in her company Christmas party. I would say I was 12 years old Wow. and I was in seventh grade and I know this because that was when I was finally allowed to explore, I guess, makeup because yeah. my mom had finally given up like with me always stealing her makeup bag and that was when I found you oh. and actually my first videos that I found of you weren't even your makeup tutorials they were like your skincare hacks yeah and that's why I keep talking about your um, egg whites or <laughs> yes, like yeah. your, the DIYs your yeah. DIY the hacks, egg whites the and hacks. like the seaweed ones like I did all of them Michelle wow. you have no idea what drew you to beauty would you say it's interesting because I would say my dad drew me to beauty more than mm. my mom probably did. My dad is this metrosexual Filipino man who had Ooh, like okay. super long hair growing up and he had the 20 step skincare routine before the Koreans even <laughs> like wow. made it. Yes. Okay. My dad was super metrosexual. He would have been so popular today Very. if he was on TikTok. <laughs> and he was this delusional guy that thought he was going to be like a pop star. And so, <laughs> so I would say my dad was my introduction to vanity and I guess getting ready and like right. dressing up. The celebration and the ritual of yes. just beauty. In, in a way, makeup is magic, and right. that was his magic in mm -hmm. a way. And he's a wow. Leo too, so. Oh gosh, that wow. Part. So there's a lot of link there, like when it comes to the energy of, of your father too. Yes. Wow. Is it? Can I ask you questions? Can I ask Michelle questions? Yeah, okay, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> you're allowed to. Um, is it weird when people come up to you and tell you that they raise you raise them? I think what's weird about it is because you know being being on the other side of the camera, you don't really see the people, right? So it just feels like when you're filming, you're kind of talking to yourself and everything. Right. And so when people come up to you, it's like, oh wow, you exist. You're a real person. So I think that um, kind of throws me off a little bit. It's like, wow, you're real. It's it's a out of body type of experience. Mm -hmm. It's so endearing in a way, and you could. Because I'm very intuitive, I'm very empathetic, I could feel energy from people. Yes. So I feel like a lot of people that grew up watching me, they almost feel like my extended family in, in a strange way. I, I also feel like I know them too. And also like the wonderful part is really seeing people who grew up watching me and seeing them rise and seeing them shine as someone who is, you know, a creator, but also someone who is also trying to find my own way and my own identity through this world, through this experience that we call life, knowing that it gives me so much purpose and fulfillment because I realize, wow, my existence matters and my existence inspired someone else yes. to find their identity. And it just, it's almost like, you know, circle of life type of moment that it happens. It is, and speaking of circle of life, like my host, before I was even writing my speech, you were the first thing I, I wanted to mention so bad in my speech and I was so shook when you came on stage today, Michelle. Oh <laughs> it was my a gosh. <laughs> yes. I mean, I saw your picture already in the yeah. walls. Your yeah, yeah. big face is in there. <laughs> and I, I just didn't expect you to be here because I didn't see this ensemble anywhere. <laughs> and I think you were like stuffed in the back or something. And I just was so shook, Michelle. And Aww. girl, you don't make me forget my whole speech. Aww. But just thank you for everything you do and still doing, honestly. And Girl, you done pioneered a whole industry just for us Asian kids and like now it's still thriving and I have to ask you, where do you see beauty going? I see beauty evolving more into wellness. I see beauty evolving more into consciousness. When I first started, it was really outer beauty because I think I didn't really love myself when I was young, you know, because I didn't know how to love myself because we grow up being surrounded by a lot of people who are traumatized and unknowingly they project that onto us and we take it in as empathetic people, as creators, we take it in and we take on these traumas and we slowly, it slowly starts whittling away our identity. And I think what's so wonderful about beauty is that we're reminded that ritual of being beautiful again. We're reminded, wait, I am worthy, I am beautiful. Yes. So I think my whole journey, even YouTuber, even being burnt out and all of that. And as you would know, like being a public figure, a lot of people want to use you. And it's really hard when you're empathetic to say no. So during my whole career, there was a lot of people who stole money from me, who used me, who uh, also 
uh, bad friends who weren't really friends. They were like not really there as a friend. They were almost like an enemy, spreading yeah. rumors and all this stuff. And it actually made me traumatized. And that's when I went away for a while because I was so hurt by all these people who were taking from me. But during that time, I realized that they were hurt and they didn't. They were projecting stuff onto me. So I had to go through a whole journey. I told you, I took plant medicine, I took ayahuasca and all of that. My state of consciousness shifted where I realized, wait, like we're actually all one. We are the universe experiencing each other. Yes. And we need to remind each other that we're beautiful. So where I see beauty shifting more towards is really consciousness where, ah. you know what I'm saying? Because now we're more aware. Now we have the younger generation who grew up online and they're just more aware about the world and we're becoming more aware about ourselves. So where we're going next is we need to all be one together, unified together. Because before, I think a few years ago, there was a lot of drama in the beauty space, right? And it's, it's a lot of ego. It's a lot of it ego, it's a lot of insecurities. And you know, a lot of it's not their fault. Like they grow up and they grew up in societies where they're carrying this, this weight, this trauma. And me coming back now, shedding this, the snakeskin of all of these, all of my old identity and now remembering who I am. And that's why I think your speech about how you're always gonna be yourself is so important because so many people, all they want is to be seen, heard and acknowledged and they feel so lonely, they're so desperate for connection that they're willing to compromise their identity and pretend to be someone else just to belong in a group. You know what I'm saying? Oh my God, and you I, are preaching to me right, right now. Right, and I think what you're doing is so, I wish I grew up watching you because I'm like, he's so real. Like in a way, seeing you rise reminded me, wait, if this person is living their best life and they're unapologetically themselves, I can also be that person too. So you also inspired me too, my I dear. I love you. You really did. I love you too. That was, ah, uh, that was so beautifully said. And I, I just want to add on to just waking up and just like realizing yeah. that beauty is so far beyond use code Bremen Rock or you know <laughs> this is the best foundation in the world yeah. it's so much more than that and it's, it's connection it's connection mm -hmm. and like it's so weird because for a while going back to you know the dramas in beauty I was almost kind of like wow beauty is not so beautiful really, yeah it really wasn't it wasn't yeah and i think moment. i needed that to happen for me to realize that girl well you stood out during that moment yeah i think a lot of people were just like a lot of people energetically were like this why is this bringing me down i don't like this and you in a way because there was so much darkness you were this shining light yes. that was and you were just being authentically yourself and i just listened and, to my intuition yeah, and, and that's like, the magic my career in social media has become so spiritual and just mm. like everything that i post is because of my intuitions and yes. just like things that I enjoy now, like even if like no one's posting about chickens, I'm gonna post my chickens every day. <laughs> or even if it's just like coconut waters that I'm reviewing in cereals, it's just like, it's all just like things that I wanted to do and it, there's like no pressure when it comes to social media and I don't know why we put so much pressure on ourselves. Because too. I think a lot of people put pressure because they feel like they have to perform. Remember how I said before, so many people wanna belong so they have to pretend to be someone else in order to be liked and you you never had to do that because you were just always you yeah. and i think that's so wonderful and you're setting an example for a future generation of of people who are lost and who are like wait i bretman is reminding me that i just need to access my inner child because I, when i watch a lot of your content my inner child's so happy Thank that's you. what it is and that is intuition that intuition is linked to your inner child to your true self to the little boy who was watching these videos and who wanted to steal, yes. you know, makeup and everything. I did, and I did. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. So what do you have in store for us, Miss Michelle? Oh gosh. Or what do you not have in store for us? I, I feel like you are <laughs> doing the most. Oh wait. I'm really interested in now consciousness. Okay. Like I think like a lot of people, even like Asian community, it's so hard for them to be vulnerable. You know, and I think like they just need to open their heart. And so like, how do we create a safe space for them to be vulnerable, to open their heart? How do we mindfully introduce a little bit of plant medicine or psychedelics or meditation or different modalities for them to experience a sense of consciousness where they are more aligned to their true self? And so I think that's something I really want to explore. I don't know what that means um, because there, you know, my whole career, and this is why like, I'm in my mid thirties now, and so you're still younger, but there's gonna be a moment where 
in your mid thirties, you're going to, going to carry a lot of your experience and it's a good time to kind of take a few steps back, reflect, and then redirect where you want to go because you're going to be a different person when you're in your thirties and you're going to, it, it. it's awesome. Like you feel, <laughs> if you feel like you're more yourself right now, wait till you hit your thirties, you're going to be on another level, like God level. And I feel like I'm here just to remind you on your journey to just keep going. You're on the right path. Thank you. And to keep I staying actually the course. needed that. Thank you so much. Yes. And I, I want to know, like, what are your upcoming projects? Because I know uh, you are so busy. Yeah, I've been actually. I just finished writing my book, which I wow. didn't know being an author was going to be in my arsenal. But it was actually really fun. And I think for me, writing that book um, and recently I've been meditating a lot. Wow. I've been able to connect with my grandmother um, through just meditation and yes. she'll tell me certain messages. And something that I got from the universe is that I am going to go down in history as one of the best entertainers of my time. Oh, yeah. And I don't know how I got that download, but ever since I heard that, I just want to do it all. I want to explore everything. And then, like, I, I want to explore the entertainment world when it comes to writing, when it comes to mm -hmm. comedy, when it comes to just everything that has to do with entertainment. I want to do it all. Oh yes, you're the main character in this life. Yes, right I want my own yes. like Netflix comedy special, even though I'm not a comedian. I want to write for shows for Disney about like a immigrant boy who is in wow. a cartoon, who just wow. has to figure out the world himself. Manifest, baby. Yes. You got this, And Manifest I it. just want to be a superhero. I feel like I belong <laughs> in the Marvel universe. <laughs> so, you are a so, superhero. Yeah, but I think- Manifest, you got I this. I am, girl, I Keep, am. Speak it to, don't say, I want, I am. I am a superhero. I am a superhero. I'm the next Marvel superhero. I am a comedic star. I am. I am the greatest entertainer. I am the greatest entertainer of my time, <laughs> and that is all that I have coming up is really just becoming Bremen Rock. Well, I'm so excited just to continue seeing you rise and I'm so grateful. Oh Thank my gosh, you. you always make me feel, I always go like <laughs> this talking to Michelle because I'm always like in awe of her. Aww. I love her. Thank you. Thank you. No, give me a hug. Thank you. I love you. Too, Thank you for everything. You. This was definitely an unforgettable night. Yes. <laughs>